Yo, what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Tuesday, June 16th, 2020. I'm one of your hosts, Blessing, Addy Oye Jr. Joining me is Imran, the Don Khan. Howdy. Imran, how's it going? I feel like it's been a minute. It has been a minute. I haven't. I think last week was me and Fran. So it's been at least two weeks. Yeah. I, remember, well, I can't remember past a week ago. Like it, Last we week could've. was you and Fran. I think the week before that was when we had all the black voices on the show. And I think right, the week yes. before that might have been the Funhouse week. And I think the week before that, it might have been you and Fran again. Because like one of those one of the weeks I had a nosebleed that was like not stopping. And I was like, I cannot be on the show today. Cause I because <laughs> for some reason I just got a random nosebleed that like ruined the rest of my day in terms of shows. But it's, okay, yeah. I never knew uh, why. I just at some point I woke up and was like, Oh, you're hosting today. I was like, Cool, sure. Yeah. No, I text so Let's get it. So, so <laughs> I texted Greg. This is like legit, like me getting ready to be on the show and, and all that stuff. And like I was in the shower, and all of a sudden, like my nose starts bleeding, which is the thing that happens. Like that's the thing that throughout my life, like that's been an issue. Like my my nose will just bleed at random times. Usually when the seasons changed or like something something's going on climate wise, I don't know why my body responds to to weather and climate that way, but it does. Uh, and so I'll get nosebleeds, and. It was one of those things where it happened, and I was like, "All right, I'll clean this up. Ho- hopefully, those will last like ten minutes. I know how to deal with a nosebleed." And it kept going and going and going to the point where I was like, I don't think I can be on shows today because if this stops, it might start up again during a show, which would probably be a disaster. That would probably be like an experience that we probably wouldn't we wouldn't want to play out. <laughs> uh, it'd be great content probably, but I I wouldn't want to risk it. And so yeah, I'd like message Greg and I was like, Greg, there's an emergency. I don't know if I, I don't know if I can be on Games Daily today. And I think that's when he tagged in Fran, um, which is awesome because Fran needs to be on the show more. We don't get enough Fran. Yeah. There, there was a time where I was coming to the show, like, I was getting out of the, the bathroom behind me, and I, like, just, you know how you sometimes just kick a door accidentally? Like, not hard, but it's enough to stub your toe? Oh, yeah. I, I kicked the door. I, my toe itself did not, it was a, the big toe did not hurt, but it did damage the door. And it was like a half second was like, I wonder if I should call out the show just in case, but like, my toe is broken. I don't realize just, it. Just in case the toe falls off in the middle of the yeah. show. And you can't that would also be a thing we don't it. want to play out. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Emra, have you been keeping up with all the different game showcases and everything going on over the last, let's say, five days? If by keeping up, you mean I see on Twitter that it's happening and I'm like, oh, I should probably watch this. I don't have like a schedule in front of me because I can afford not to do that. But it's like, I watched the PS5 reveal, and every other review, every other show since then has been like, "Oh, that's a thing on Twitter. I should get logged yeah. on to Twitch and actually watch this." What 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 have been some announcements that particularly have spoken to you? The Bug Snack song has been stuck in my head for the oh, last. God, I five love days. it so much. I love it so much. <laughs> Bug Snacks has also been stuck in my head, and also like the more and more I think about that game, the more and more I'm excited about it. Yeah, it's one of those ones. I. Uh, the Horizon trail was weird because I had not finished Horizon by the time that game came or that trailer was shown. So, like, the fact that Lance Reddick was in that may, has made every interaction with Lance Reddick in the game since then. Since, since I've been continuing to play it after that, it's made every interaction like, I'm very suspicious of you because yeah. I don't know why you're in the sequel. So, I need to know, like, I, I'm waiting for a turn of some sort of like, why would they show Lance Reddick? Is it because he's yeah. a star or because he's important? Yeah, no, d- definitely. And those are always the interesting, interesting things. I remember um, I had a friend, my friend Alex, when they showed the Last of Us Part 2 trailer for the first time, he hadn't played the Last of Us 1. Uh, and so and he was planning to play the Last of Us 1. And, and I remember him asking me questions because I guess he thought the Last of Us 1 ended a certain way. And when he saw the Last of Us Part 2 trailer, he was like, all right, so like, what's going on here? Because I, I didn't know whether Joel survived in the Last of Us 1 or not. Like, how does that, how does that stuff play out? And I had to explain. Wait, play. Did, did he finish? Like he just he played the game. He just did not finish it. He hadn't played it. I think no. Oh, I, okay. He had started it. Um, but like I guess he just never got around to actually finishing it. And so he had he has he had things that he assumed uh, as far as how it ended because I think he thought he was spoiled, but he wasn't really spoiled. Um, and so it was, it was one of those ones where I was like, just finish the game. It'll make sense what you get there. Uh, everything's okay. Just don't pay attention to the next trailer uh, <laughs> or to the to the second trailer. To which I'll say to you, don't even don't even mind the Horizon Forbidden <laughs> West trailer. Just like keep your head head just directly in Horizon uh, Zero Dawn. Uh, and once you get there, you'll get there. I was a, I also. thought I was going to finish last night because there was a point where Lance Reddick says like, if you have anything to do, do it now because once you do this, you're not going to come back. And then that was like four hours of gameplay after that. And there was a oh, point yeah. where I'm, I'm like climbing a mountain and he's like, this mountain is full of monsters. It is full of robots that are going to like attack your return. It's like, it's midnight. I'm not gonna finish this game right now. I'm I'm gonna wait. So I'm somewhere close to the end of that game. 
Are you enjoying it? Where. I'm enjoying it a decent bit. I it's the most beautiful game I've ever seen. I think I really like it. I can kind of see where some of the things that were annoying me at first go by the wayside and the some other ways the systems interact. Be- Horizon is an exhausting game. That's, I think, what the best thing I could say about it. Not, not, mm-hmm. That's not meant to be a negative thing. It's an exhausting game because it's a, a thing where an open world where every enemy is trying to kill you constantly. Yeah. And I think the reason they did that was because they figured, okay, people are going to fast travel everywhere. So we might as well give them an open world that's challenging to get to places the first time. And that's that totally makes sense, except for the fact that it's so resource oriented. So that those systems kind of mm. collide that. I don't fast travel everywhere because I want to gather resources for arrows and medicine and animals and all that jazz. And as I'm doing that, it's, I'm constantly having to duck all these giant enemies that are trying to kill me. So I'm constantly like tired by the game. Not that I dislike it, not that I'm not enjoying it. It's that mm-hmm. I have to always be on with it. And that is much more exhausting in an open world game than I would have thought. Yeah, I I had actually the exact same experience. I remember uh, trying to gather resources and whatever I would try to like, just like knock off checklist things. I remember being getting attacked by the machines and being like, "All right, guys, just leave me alone, please. Just for a good like ten minutes, just leave me alone because I just want to gather flowers so so I can have health." Um, I would totally do a potion that just like enemies don't attack me for as long as I'm wearing this. Like it doesn't work in story missions; it just works in the open world. I would use that for sure. Yeah, I mean, my my arc with Horizon Zero Dawn though, I think is is kind of similar because when I first started that game, there were things that kind of bugged me, and then by the time I got to the end of it, I was like, okay, no, like th- this game really, really, really grew on me in a way where I am I am really fascinated by the combat. I don't I I think I've said before on the show that I didn't necessarily love the the chip damage nature of it uh, mm-hmm. because because of how like it's it's an action RPG, um, but it's more it's more action than RPG. Um, yeah. when, that, when that being the case, I didn't necessarily love how how chip chip damage damage focused it was especially with the bow and arrow um but like the more and more i played it the more and more i kind of appreciated it and, and especially the combat like the the way you feel like you have to kind of deconstruct machines um and figure out their, their weaknesses and all that stuff that stuff eventually grew on me in a way that i i really enjoyed yeah when it sings it sings beautifully like it's better yes. than monster hunter and so at times and there's some times where i'm like oh god it's another five people like that's i think the encounter design is a little tweak of there's usually two to three people more than there needs to be but when they're you're fighting one-on-one like a giant monster it's like okay this is fantastic when you're fighting like Mm -hmm. one-on-two it's like "Mm, this is a little less good and when you're fighting humans it's like okay i wish i was not fighting these people Mm -hmm. i wish i was fighting monsters instead Imran, enough about Horizon Zero Dawn. Let's talk about WB's next game announcement, Nintendo wanting you to jump rope and more because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily each and every weekday at 10 a.m. live right here on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. If you're watching live, you can correct us when you get stuff wrong by going to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. If you don't want to watch live, you can watch later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, roosterteeth.com, or you can listen later on podcast services around the globe by searching for kind of funny games daily to be a part of the show at the patreon.com slash kind of funny games or bronze members or above get to write in and silver members or above get the show ad free with the exclusive daily post show housekeeping ea play again is happening this thursday 4 p.m pacific time and we'll be reacting to it live right here on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games and youtube.com slash kind of funny games imran are you looking forward to the ea play event do you have any predictions on what we might what we might see I mean, I was going to say Star Wars, but they went ahead and just kind of announced that Star Wars anyway. Yeah. Uh, let's say Skate. Well, I say it every yeah, year. Really. Like, go why hard not? Or go home. I why, love why it. The, why the hell not? Let's maybe this is Skate's year. Tony Hawk is back. Maybe they're like, "Fuck it, we got to we got to launch Skate now. We got to reignite the wars." One of my, one of that that I'm going to throw out there that I haven't mentioned yet, as far as the prediction that I don't necessarily think is going to happen, but I would be pleased if it did. I would like to see Anthem make a reappearance. I'd like to see them like bust out what their their vision is for a revamped Anthem, whether it's like Anthem 2 or Anthem Next or whatever they call it, because they, they've been working on it. And I know there have been recent reports of them uh, talking about how they have a small team that is like chugging away and, and trying to bring that game back. Mm. I hope to see some sort of update on Anthem, because like I'd like to see that game kind of make some sort of redemption arc um 
So that, that's my prediction. That's what I'm hoping for. You know what would be cool is an Apex single player. If they were like, yes. yeah, we, we've we added a single player to Apex. Now you pay 20 bucks to get access to it. It's like a Titanfall caliber campaign. That would be neat. I want it. I want it so bad. Uh, thank you to our Patreon producers, Mom and Muhammad, Connor Nolan, and Blackjack. Today we're brought to you by patreon.com slash kind of funny games but i'll tell you about that later for now let's begin with what is and forever will be the roper report <laughs> it's time for some news we have six stories today a baker's dozen <laughs> starting like with <laughs> starting with our number one you'll have to wait until august for wb game announcements this is from stephanie nunnally at VG247. According to a press release, DC Fandom, a virtual event focusing on the DC universe, will take place in August, uh, during which time WB Games will make some announcements. It is unknown at present what the company has to announce, but considering it's been teasing a, a Batman game for what seems like ages, we might finally hear from it. There's also the possibility the company will show off the Harry Potter RPG it has in the works. Maybe the leaks, which popped up online earlier this month, will prove to be true. A report from earlier in the year stated that WB Games was going to host its first ever E3 conference this year, but its plans were scraped or its plans were scrapped due to the cancellation of E3 2020. Imran, what what is up with WB? Because yeah, we heard about this this E3 thing that they had planned that probably got mm-hmm. scrapped due to COVID and E3's cancellation and all that stuff. What do you think would have been at that conference? And do you think we're going to see all of that at this DC Fandom event? I so I would assume that whatever Monolith has been working on would be at that conference, whether it's a new Lord of the Rings game or not. Uh, Batman seems most likely, considering they they more or less announced that game, they just haven't said anything meaningful about it. Like you don't start an arg for nothing, and Harry yeah. Potter does seem like a very logical thing. We know Hitman is not WB now. We know it's IO Interactive. So they, I, I would have assumed that would have been at a WB conference, but who knows. IO Interactive also did sign a deal with WB last year for a new IP. It may be too early to show that, but maybe they could have like teased it or had some sort of tr- CG trailer for it. But that honestly, who knows if that game even exists anymore, considering the other not issues but turmoil. I guess WB is in right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're we're in an interesting place with with WB games because <clears throat> like DC fandom, right, and, and them teasing WB ga- game announcements at dc fandom that tells me that we're gonna see batman like we have to see batman um it being an an event focused on the dc universe i feel like harry potter would be kind of a weird thing to see there yeah i saw Um, that paragraph i was like "Hmm, it just literally says it's about dc universe yeah and so like i'm like okay i don't I, i i can't see what we'd see there aside from batman or if rocksteady is working on a on a um uh, a Superman game or some kind of DC game, like mm-hmm. I'd expect to maybe see it there. But also, like, would they announce those things at the same place at the same time? That feels like it's off in terms of the optics there. Um, I mean, Rock City's never really cared for WME Montreal, apparently. <laughs> like, there was that whole thing where they don't really consider Arkham Origins a an Arkham game. Like, remember? Mm-hmm. Like, they they very pointedly went when Arkham Knight released or was making the media circuits of this is the end of the Arkham trilogy. People were like, what about Arkham Origins? They're like, we don't talk about that. So I could see if they wanted to, if if somebody at WB was like, we should just show these two things. I don't think Rocksteady would care that much, but who knows? I don't, I agree with you. I don't think they would show both at once if they're both DC superhero games. Yeah. And and I, and I think that's the thing. And I think I, I agree with that. Do you think, what do you what do you think the chances are between a Rock City game and a in the in the WB, WB Montreal Batman game? Uh, what do you think the chances are between those showing up at DC Fandom? WBs aren't uh, the WB Montreal game sounds more ready for prime time in that they've already been teasing it. So if they had to show one, I think they would show that one. I think once you show the Rock City game, you can't show the the uh, WB Montreal game because then it becomes oh this is the redhead steps brother stepchild of the mm-hmm. WB uh, portfolio. So I could see them waiting for this game to be announced, come out and like get its critical reception before they do anything else with Rocksteady. That said, who knows what Rocksteady's game is? If it's a, like I suspect, an Avengers-like kind of thing, then maybe they just say it as a, it's a different enough project that we might as well just show it. 
Wait, do you think it's Justice League in that case? Like, do you think they're they're working on that kind of game or like some kind of new IP? I had heard it was Suicide Squad. I don't know if that's still the case, but that was the thing that I heard a couple of years ago. Granted, again, a couple of years ago, that might have changed, but mm. that like I could easily see that being a games as a service thing. Interesting. We'll have to wait and see. I don't see if if Rocksteady came out and they announced a like a games as a service type of game. I feel like I personally would be very bummed about it. Like seeing what Rocksteady has done in the, done in the past and seeing like I I couldn't imagine what a Rocksteady Suicide Squad on the surface sounds cool. That sounds like a good idea. I'd be into that as a video game. That as some sort of Avengers type game from Crystal Dynamics, if they're going that route is a bummer to me because i feel i feel like that studio does so well with what they've been doing as far as making single player games and like single player open world games i mean that's kind of what like that's the problem square's having with avengers is they ha- they can't get people excited about it because everyone sees it as the long ter- the long tail of the game and not like the main campaign and they've not been do- i guess that'll change with like what are they calling it avengers day the thing later this month where they're actually showing off more of the game yeah. like They've not been able to make the single player argument for it at all. So if they can do that, then I think that's great for that game. And I think if Rocksteady showed like if it did if they did happen to be making a games as a service game, I don't know for a fact they are all I like. But if they did, I think people would be like, okay, well what what's the campaign like? And if they mm-hmm. if the campaign is good, then great. But if it's a longer thing of this is a you know multiplayer game primarily, then I think people would be disappointed. Hmm. I also want to point out, right? This the DC fandom again is scheduled to happen in August, and I believe at the beginning of the year, me, Barrett, and I think Greg took bets on when we'd see WB Montreal's Batman game, and I I believe my prediction was August, and so I need somebody to like look that up. I don't know if I if I should assign that to nanobiologists or somebody specific, but I want the proof, I want the receipts, and I want people to acknowledge that I am right about these predictions, and I am killing it with the predictions this year. I'm just saying. Shit. Thank you, Kevin. Hold Thank on. you. Hold I on. appreciate it. Oh, Thank you, Kevin. Very nice. Thank you. There it is. <laughs> the the looking to side to side actually makes it like better, but also weird in a like it, it's an uncanny Kevin Valley in a weird way. Oh God, uncanny Kevin Valley sounds like a YouTube series that I'd want to watch. Story like number two. Really bad salad dressing. Sto- oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Story number two. Nintendo Shadow dropped a free jump rope game. This is John Porter at The Verge. Jump Rope Challenge is a, is a charming new free game from Nintendo that uses a pair of Joy-Cons to jump a virtual rope. You hold the Joy-Cons as though they're jump rope handles and swing them around as you jump. Jumping bunnies, <laughs> jumping bunny rabbits, uh, show your progress on screen. The initial aim is to do 100 jumps a day, although this goal can be increased. It's a simple bit of exercise, but the big the big benefit is that the game doesn't require any additional accessories. In contrast to Nintendo's other recent exercise game, uh, Ring Fit Adventure, uh, has experienced big stock shortages as people turn, turn to it as a way to work out at home. Other fitness equipment has seen a similar surge in demand resulting in shortages. Nintendo says Jump Rope Challenge is the work of a small team of its developers working from home in Japan. As you'd expect, this also means it got, uh, it's got a fairly limited feature set. There's a simple two-player mode where each person holds a single Joy-Con controller, and you can customize your, bunny, your bunny's clothes on the fly. You can technically cheat the system a bit by bending your knees rather than jumping, but ultimately, it's a similar amount of effort. And Nintendo points out that it's a great way for people who would otherwise struggle to jump to enjoy the game. Quote, it's all the fun of jumping, but there's not a rope in sight, Nintendo says. Jump Rope Challenge will be available for a limited time until the end of September from the Nintendo Switch's eShop. Imran, did you catch this as it was happening last night? I saw it happening at first. I thought it was like a joke of like, oh yeah, that's that's a, seems like a funny thing Nintendo would do, haha. And then I saw the actual screenshots. I'm like, somebody went through a lot of effort to do this, and then I realized it was actually real. Which I, like, yeah. it's not a bad thing. It's just weird to just suddenly yeah. suddenly drop. I love it as like a cool little thing, right? Like. There's there's a bunch of shortages of Ring Fit Adventure. There's mm-hmm. a bunch of shortages on workout equipment in general, as this, as this article points out. And yeah, where people are are kind of dying to get their hands on something like Ring Fit Adventure, and when where Nintendo can can kind of see that firsthand, it seems pretty cool to give people a, a free alternative 
uh it's interesting that it's only available until the end of september which i imagine is is because this is supposed to be like a um like a stand-in for what ring fit would be for them Mm -hmm. um but you know even with that being the case i mean i think it's a cool why not sort of thing like it's a cool kind of uh hey we can like we have we have a small team of people that can work on this and can make it probably pretty easily uh let's make it let's put it out there uh and let's have let's allow people to be able to use it for their own benefit yeah like the, with the ring fit adventure they had that uh rhythm game dlc which is like it's cool that they can just sort of add these things but again like the article pointed out that game is hard to get for a lot of people so it makes mm-hmm. sense to if you have joy cons might as well do this this is a nice way to get fit i feel very bad for anyone who lives underneath anyone that has this and wants to do it because that's the main issue i have right now that's the main <laughs> that's the main issue i have is that i live on a second floor and kevin you can probably tell me better than i can than i know so you're, i'm sure you're under, above a garage you know that right? I, okay i so know i'm above fine. a garage but do can they hear, can they hear me though no unless you go what? to the two other rooms you're, you're not above <laughs> okay them. you're totally fine then I, yeah i might go crazy case, just, yeah, talk, I, just talk to them just ask <laughs> just be like hey aaron Am but I like, what did that conversation noise? look like? But hey, man, Carol, can you want to jump up and down in my room for an hour a day? Like, exactly, I like man. Gonna, be like, hey, man, it's such an conversation to have. I'm trying to do that exercise and stay fit. I don't know, man. It feels like just a weird, weird conversation to have. Trying to explain this Nintendo technology to your go readers, up to them you know? and say it's all the fun of jumping, but there's not a rope in sight, and they will understand. <laughs> But yeah, I downloaded it and I started like using it this morning, and I, it was one of those things where I was kind of self conscious because because I, I could feel myself like making noise mm-hmm. uh, or like ma- like making the ground shake. And I know I'm above a garage, but I just don't know how much that that sound travels. And so thanks for that clarification, Kevin. That they probably can't hear me. I appreciate it. But I'm just saying, communicate, man. It's it's the the solution I'm such a bad for communicator, every love though. and sex stuff. You got to learn, man. We got to do it together. Yeah, but I I'm, do I'm think shy, like- Kevin. It does make sense to talk to your like neighbors or landlords or whoever and say, hey, I need to exercise occasionally. We're all quarantined. This is the way I'm going to exercise. I think people would understand. I also could just go in like the front yard and just jump rope on the street or whatever. Or not on the street, but like in the driveway. You but look then like there's a, a fucking rope. psychopath. Don't do that. That's insane. <laughs> I guess theoretically you could take your Switch out somewhere with you and like yeah. put it up and like just jump rope. He's like, what's wrong has a with pan. you guys? There's a pan. We have a backyard. We have a backyard. <laughs> Story number three. A new Kingdom Hearts game has been announced. This is Adam Bankhurst at IGN. And Kevin, I have a, I have a trailer in the dock if you could play it as we're, as we're making our way through the story. Because this is an interesting one. Square so, Enix wait, wait, has I'm announced... Sorry. You're cool if it's muted or... If it's muted, it's fine, yeah. All right. Square Enix has announced Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory, a rhythm game coming to Nintendo Switch, PS4, and Xbox One later this year. The announcement trailer shows Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory in action, and it looks to feature character designs and gameplay that that is similar in form to Square Enix's Final Fantasy Fiat Rhythm. Did I say that right, Imran? Are you familiar with Fiat Rhythm? I've I've never had to pronounce it out loud. I think maybe I'd say Theater Rhythm. Theater Rhythm. It's the like joke, it's the, the f- joke in it is supposed to be that the AT stands for Active Time, so it's supposed to be like oh, the AT. Get out of here. That's the intended joke. I don't think it plays very well in any language. Well, what Square Enix, man. I, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to hate, but get out of here. Uh, but yeah, similar in form to Square Enix's Final Fantasy Fiat Rhythm game. Uh, the trailer showcases not only Sora, Donald, and Goofy, but Riku, Kairi, Hercules, Aladdin, and other fan favorite characters from the Kingdom Hearts franchise. Uh, Imran, you're Kingdom Hearts fan number one here. What does this do for you? Honestly, not that much. Like I like Kingdom Hearts music, but a lot of it's licensed. Like if if you're telling me that oh the uh, the Coliseum theme is going to be playable, I'm like the Coliseum theme sucks. Like it's not a good, it's not a good track, and I I only think of that one part of it, and then I hate it. But like I think of the the Frozen music is pretty good. The This Is Halloween is pretty good, and those are all disney things do you do you think they're gonna have those no because i can't imagine yeah i couldn't imagine that they would be able to pull those for their own rhythm game if they can then like amazing but i don't think they will what the hell's going on in the trailer it went i have no idea look at this rhythm game to like oh it's first person now you're like this dark world because i watched the trailer i i don't recall any of this they know no one's gonna buy it unless it has some kingdom hearts bullshit in there to like 
it's going to be that one thing that you play Kingdom Hearts 4. It's like, oh, there's this big scene based around this part of our, uh, what was this called? Something of Melody. Memory of, Melody of Memory. And like, you're not going to understand it unless you've played that game. Yeah. So like looking at gameplay right now, right? It looks like you have characters on different lanes and you're essentially switching back and forth. Or I guess- like Amplitude. Have, okay. Yeah. It looks similar to something like Ampl Amplitude where it is lane based and you are, um, you're basically fighting enemies to the beat is what it looks like. Yeah. Which looks cool. It it kind of looks like a PS2 game, if I'm being honest, from like the actual character models. But like the, I also don't have much of a problem with that. The models overlaid on video is like the cheapest looking thing. Yeah. Like it looks look very cheap. When they're in just like a normal world, I'm like, okay, yeah, that looks okay. When it's like them on top of video, it's like, oh, this looks bad. Yeah. That, that's kind of the vi vibes I'm getting, but I'm not necessarily the Kingdom Hearts person, and so I'm not. Yeah, uh, this isn't necessarily model. marketed. It's but not I'm necessarily gonna... marketed towards me, but Imran, I assume you're going to get it as, oh, the, yeah, absolutely. as a Kingdom Hearts fan. I, I'm going to play it, and because I, I do expect there's going to be like one story thing that they need later. But yeah, I, I think I would have preferred it if they just made a theater rhythm style game, like if it just looked exactly like that and what it like. I don't know. Whatever. It's. We'll see what the track list is, and then I'll be excited or dismissive. I mean, it might have like a bunch of uh, Hikaru songs, which like oh, shit, those are yeah. always those are always jams, right? If they like, put in every theme. single intro, like every variation of it, I'd be pretty down. Yeah, like that'd be a great soundtrack right there. Yeah. Story number four: <clears throat> That itch.io bundle raised uh, eight point one million dollars. This is from Matthew Handrahan at GamesIndustry.biz. The itch.io itch bundle for racial justice and equality uh, has raised more than $8.1 million for charities related to the Black Lives Matter movement. The bundle was on sale for 10 days in which, it's, it, purchased, in which it was purchased by around 810,000 people for an average of $10. The $8.1 million raised represented 163% of its $5 million target. While the amount raised is, is huge, the bundle was also no notable for what it contained. 1,704 games from 1,361 individual creators, which could be purchased for as little as $5. That included many high-profile independent titles, including Night in the Woods uh, and Overland uh, from Finji, Map Makes Games' Celeste, and Laundry Bear Games' A Mortician's Tale. Quote, we live in a time of racial injustice, inequality, and police brutality against Black people, uh, itch.io itch said in a statement. They continue, we hope that everyone takes a stand in any way they can, end quote. This is one of the largest donations made by the games industry in support of Black Lives Matter since the death of George Floyd at the hands of, of Minnesota police on May 25th. Uh, this is awesome to see. Like, mm -hmm. I've been, I've, every time I've uh, seen the updates on the itch.io bundle and seeing that they, 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 they've been adding more and more games to the point where they went from about, like, I think over 700 to now over 1,700 that's one that's a wild bundle like that's the craziest bundle i've ever seen in my life in terms of video games yeah. um and like you know they 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 highlight some of the games here but it it goes it goes way deeper than that right like you have games like uh like kids um you have man i there are every, quite a few games in, the, in there that were like stand out that i can't think of off the top because there are a lot of <laughs> every time i open the list like because I, I bought the bundle too every time i open mm -hmm. the list to look at the games it'd be like oh i wonder what i should play i get like overwhelmed and then tired and be like i will look at this another time because it is there's a ton of games a ton of games like they're not like bad games at all they're all amazing yeah. games or not all like, amazing, but like a good number of amazing there's games a good number of amazing games like there's minute in there now that now that i'm remembering minute uh 2064 read only memories um one night stand is in there which i believe was part of a kind of funny game showcase uh, i think last year or at least recently um yeah there's there's quite a few games in there where for for Celeste alone is worth more than five dollars, right? Yeah. Celeste alone is a game that I I'd buy for way more than five dollars, um, and there's multiple of those in there, multiple games on of that caliber in there. And so as a bundle, it's incredible. But yeah, as as even more so, the amount of money raised toward uh supporting the Black Lives Matter movement, eight point mm -hmm. one million dollars, uh, is a great success. So shout out to that. I also like that the average donation was ten dollars. So everyone saw like the minimum price they could get, which was not everyone, but like most people saw the minimum price they could get it for, which is five dollars for this deal is insane. 
yeah. but they went like, okay, no, there's actually this is for charity. We want to do something good, so they raised the, their their own donation a decent bit. Yeah, which is super awesome to see, to to see again. Yeah, I this is a fantastic cause and a fantastic bundle. And if you missed out, that's sad for you. But if you didn't, like, yeah, you now you have a backlog that's going to stretch for years. Yeah, because I'm like scro- now I've like opened it up and I'm scrolling through and I'm like, dude, Nuclear Throne is in there. Um, Piku Niku is in there. Like, Oxen there are quite you. a few games that are noteworthy in here. That yeah. like for five dollars as a bundle is really really good. Yeah. A normal Lost Phone, which I've heard Jerry Petty talk about. It's very good games in there. Yeah, it is enough. Like, there's a number of like small games in there. So even if you're just like hey, I'm bored and I have 30 minutes, you can go through that list and find something amazing that will fill up the 30 minutes. Yes. Yeah. And that I can even I can even attest to, right? Like I've downloaded probably three or four games so far. And I started up a short hike, which is a game that is that is not too long. And I haven't played it, played it all the way through yet, but I just messed around with it. And even there, I was like, yeah, this game seems really cool. I know a bunch of people love a short hike. Um, but be able to to have just a huge library of games now that you can jump in and, and have fun with and jump out, even if it is for thirty minutes, an hour, three hours, whatever. Like that's really cool. Yeah, good on them. I I was gonna say I hope they do this kind of thing again, but I hope they don't need to do this kind of thing again. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, for sure. For sure. Story number five: PAX Australia has been canceled. This is Matthew right. Handrahan at gamesindustry.biz. PAX Australia is the latest consumer games event to be canceled due to COVID-19. The annual event was due to take place in Melbourne, Australia from October 9th to 11th this year. However, the the organizer has confirmed a postponement due to the impact of COVID-19. While the statement released by the PAX Australia team describes it as postponed, it makes clear that the next edition of PAX Australia will now take place in 2021. At the time of writing, PAX West was still due to go to go ahead despite taking place in early September and being held in the U.S., which has a substantially worse record with COVID-19 than Australia. And so there's your your COVID up update. Um, as far as like big, big cons happening this year, right, like it's pretty much a wash. And so this isn't surprising. It's still a little bit surprising to me that PAX West hasn't been canceled. And I've been attributing that to like um, uh, Seattle. Poly- had- has bigger problems yes like i've been attributing that to like seattle and like them like it's probably it's probably a a facility thing a convention center thing like they're Mm -hmm. probably waiting for the city to cancel it before they cancel it so that they they can get their money back or something along those lines it's still surprising me surprising to me that they haven't done it yet because i feel like for everybody involved it should be very clear that you cannot hold pax west this year yeah no Uh, absolutely like they haven't sold tickets and they would have usually sold them by like early may unusual years so hmm. i i think they know it's not going to happen but they're so they're waiting for the force majeure which is like the the city canceling it for them yes i wonder if it's seattle and pax like having a standoff because seattle wants it, like conventions like pax make big money for the city so i bet they do want it there even if it does like it's not super safe to do so and they're kind of hoping that like by september the whole thing is blown over but it's not like I love PAX. I, that is a yearly ritual for me is to go up to Seattle and hang out with friends and play board games and do PAX. And like, sometimes I work it, sometimes I don't. But if they announce PAX West is still happening this year, and even if they announce all of my, or they, even if all my friends were going, I would not go. It's, it's too dangerous. It's too risky. That is the number one way that like you're most likely to catch something is by being in that like massive humanity that is PAX. I don't, to me, the question is, isn't would I go to PAX this year? It is, what year would I be safe going to PAX? And I don't know that's going to be true for the next, uh, uh, maybe even not next year or the year after. So I have, I have this tweet that has just come to my attention. It's an update from PAX on Twitter, and they just tweeted this within the last hour. Uh, at PAX on Twitter tweeted this. In April, we were still... We were, we were still hoping to bring you PAX West this year, but health and safety are paramount. And as we worked as we worked on solutions, it became clear that if we really wanted to, to welcome everybody home, we'd have to take PAX online. Uh, and then they posted the full, pro- the full post, which goes like this. Um, going digital means a lot more than just a change in venue. And by transcending the physical, in, in fact, we're able to do, uh, to do more PAX than ever. PAX Online is the result of the convention organizing supergroup made up of people responsible for for PAX West, 
PAX Australia, as well as our new friends at EGX to create our new PAX online and deliver a, a steady 24-7 stream of content, events, discussions, and gameplay. Uh, oh, and did we say 24-7? We actually mean we actually meant 24-9 because we're going to be running this virtual shindig for nine days straight from September 12th to uh, through the 20th. Um, and then they go on to say they're going to have more information soon. But it sounds like it sounds here. It sounds like here that Pax West is going online, and that we're actually not going to get the f- the physical Pax West, yeah, uh, which they've just announced. And so, which is news. obviously the good thing to do is you you can't have it. It's gonna. I know people are sad, but you can't have that kind of convention this year, and most likely probably not in the near future. Yeah, and I agree. Our last news story for today, story number six, Pokemon news is coming tomorrow. This is from Pokemon's Twitter uh, at Pokemon tweeted this morning. We have Pokemon news. You want Pokemon news. And then they do like the, the thinking guy emoji. Uh, and they continue. Sounds to us like you should tune in tomorrow at 6 a.m. Pacific time for hashtag Pokemon presents. What do you think, trainers? And they, they, then they link it and have the image with it. Imran, first of all, did you catch the tweet? I did. This morning. That image what? looks a lot like a Nintendo Direct. I, like, I guess this is branding, but it looks a lot like a Nintendo Direct. It, has, it definitely has Nintendo Direct energy. Mm-hmm. What I want to know from you is what do you expect? Because when I see this, I am very much reminded of, I think it was last year that they did their uh, Pokemon like press conference thing where they announced Pokemon Sleep and Pokemon Shirts. And it was like a very ridiculous kind of press event that mm-hmm. like almost came off as like comedy uh, when you watch the actual press, press event. Um this strikes me as that because I went over to Nintendo's Twitter. Nintendo's tweeted nothing about it, which tells me that this is a specific Pokemon Company initiative. What do you expect to see tomorrow from this? So it comes out the same day as the DLC. So I think DLC will be out like tonight at midnight or something like that. So hmm. I imagine it's not about the first DLC, which is, by the way, a thing I've not seen anyone talk about. So I think it'll still sell well. I just don't think it's like a, a point of hype for a lot of people. Uh, Maybe it's about the next DLC as well. I do think, now that you're reminding me of that one event, I think it'll be like, hey, here's merchandise. Here's like the next movie we're going to talk about. Here's things like that. Like it, an overall Pokemon thing, more than just like, here's stuff about games. Uh, spinoffs seem likely too, like puzzle games, things like that. I don't think it'll be a thing that like, unless you're really big into Pokemon, I really doubt it's a appointment viewing that you're going to have to like wake up to, wake up at 6 a.m. to go see that thing but who knows like maybe it's a thing where there's something like i don't know gold silver remix again who knows god that that would be amazing but yeah i i so the energy that i get from this tweet tells me that like it's not going to be solely dlc stuff like i imagine this coming out the same day as the dlc kind of tells me tells me that we'll get maybe some updates on sword and shield and what that dlc might have in there um but it just being called a pokemon or it being called pokemon presents makes me think that is it it has to do with the with the wider brand which makes me think like we might get a pokemon sleep update maybe we'll get the actual release for pokemon sleep we might get merchandise stuff um who knows they announced I, Detective pikachu on switch a year ago and they haven't se- shown anything of it since that's so a good point maybe that's coming soon yeah or maybe a new the movie po- like they, they announced a sequel to pikachu didn't they or am i completely Detective wrong Pikachu? yeah uh not that i'm aware of as far as like maybe i'm thinking yeah, of sonic sonic they definitely announced a sequel so maybe i'm just assuming that they announced for Detective pikachu as well yeah maybe, i mean i could i could see that happening this, this seems to me though that Pokemon as a company, they they kind of want to have their own directs and their own kind of presence in terms of making announcements and in terms of of having their brand uh, and controlling their brand. This seems to me to uh, as it's going to align with that. And yeah. so I'm curious on what tomorrow might might be. I don't have my hopes up. I do expect Pokemon Sleep and like stuff of that caliber. Um, but we'll see. We'll see, Emron. Yeah, we'll see. I I definitely. Pokemon is the biggest brand in the world, and it's weird that, like, when they announce things in our circles, it's a very, like, okay, cool, we'll see. And, but there's, I'm sure, people who are, like, freaking out, and I'm sure it's all going to do quite well. Imran, I'm excited to see what the big announcements are for tomorrow's Pokemon Presents. But tomorrow is so far away. If I want to know what's coming out to Mama Grop Shops today, where would I look? 
The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform is listed by the kind of funny games that we show host each and every weekday. Do, 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 yeah. 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 Out today. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. Out today, we got Darius Cosmic Collection Arcade for PS4 and Switch. Darius Cosmic Collection Console for PS4 and Switch. Colt Canyon for Xbox One. Summer and Mara for Switch and PC. The Waylanders for PC. Hard Space Shipbreaker for PC. Disintegration for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Desperados 3 for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Velocity for PC. Carrots and Cream for PC. Vidi Culture Essential Edition for PC and Mac. Choco Pixel 6 for PC. The Forgotten Land for PC. And Wardle for PC. And then today, uh, Obsidian Entertainment launched a demo of its upcoming survival action game, Grounded. Fans registered to be an Xbox insider now have the opportunity to explore the vast, beautiful, and dangerous world of Grounded in this 30-minute single-player demo, also available through Steam as part of the Steam Game Festival. And then Behavior Interactive and Konami Digital Entertainment are proud to announce that Silent Hill, the most recent chapter of the iconic asymmetrical 4v1 game Dead by Daylight, is now available on Steam, Windows Store, PS4, Xbox One, and nintendo switch i kind of skimmed that last one at first i was like very excited and then like confused for a second because i thought yeah. i was saying silent hill the series is coming to steam it's like oh shit finally then it's like oh yeah. wait no it's, it's no dead, I, dead dead. as i was reading through it i was like oh cool new silent hill news and then like it went on and i was like oh yeah i mean nothing against dead, like, dead by daylight because that sounds exciting but yeah the framing of it would make you th make you think that we're getting a big new silent hill thing which i guess technically we kind of are a little bit yeah new dates Duke Nukem 3D 20th Anniversary Edition World Tour is coming to Nintendo Switch on June 23rd. And that's also a very long title for a game. Uh, Secret Government hits early access on June 22nd. And then Chora Saves the Universe is coming to Oculus Quest this Thursday on June 18th. Deal of the day, Kingdom, Kingdom Come is coming to free. Uh, Kingdom Come is free on Steam on June 18th to 22nd. Now it's time for Reader Mail. You can write into patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames where you can get the show ad-free. And speaking of ads, this episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily is brought to you by patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. Of course, your support means the world to Kind of Funny. Because of you, the audience, Kind of Funny is able to do cool things like launch a new studio, have full Last of Us playthroughs with Nick Scarpino, have awesome guest weeks on Kind of Funny Games Daily, launch shows like The Return of PSLFU XOXO, and more. You can head to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames if you want to support Kind of Funny Games Daily and all the content we produce on this side of Kind of Funny. And you can gain special perks like exclusive content, becoming a Patreon producer, and more. Once again, just go to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames to support the show and, look, and learn more about what we have to offer. Imran. Got to wait on the response. Imran. Oh, hi. Yes, hello. Ben Gomez writes in to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames and says, Hey, KFGD crew. Hope everything is well. I need some advice. After the PS5 reveal event, uh, I'm hyped for the PS5, but... Due to life, I had to sell my PS4 in 2018. So because of that, I never played God of War, Spider-Man, or Horizon. Should I wait until the PS5 and hope for backwards compatibility and play them on PS5, or buy, buy a PS4 now and play those games, including The Last of Us Part Two, now leading up to next gen? Much love to everyone at Kind of Funny. If you're going to buy a PS5, then wait. Like, if you know for a fact you're going to buy a PS5 and you know you probably will be able to get one at launch then there's literally no reason unless you have to be a part of the conversation which is like a bad reason to do it but yeah i would wait because those games are at, at minimum they will be on a system you're going to own if uh they're better than great that just adds to it but i i don't think there's any reason to buy a ps4 for single player games right this second if you can wait for it yeah, I 100% agree. I think if you're going to get a PS5, just wait for the PS5, because those games are going to be boosted anyway. Um, those games are going to gonna run better likely on PS5. And so if you're going to get a PS5, they've already said it's going to be back compatible also. And so there's there's really no risk in waiting. Uh, and it's only probably about five five months until we get the PS5. And yeah. so I'd say wait. 
I think waiting is the is the is the easiest option and the in, in the best option here. I, and you save I money think that way. There are games that might slip through the backwards compatibility net, but they're not going to be first party Sony titles. They're yes. going to be like indie games that are on every system, most likely. But it Spider Man is obviously going to be one that's going to work on the PS5 natively. Michael S writes in and says, with the third party reveal event for Xbox and now the PS5 reveal event both completed, do you believe Xbox is held to a higher standard by the gaming community than PlayStation based on how this generation has gone? Rewatching the reveals, Greg literally held up a sign saying boo at the end of the Assassin's Creed gameplay reveal in the Xbox event. While in my opinion, I would say that the gameplay was on par as most of the gameplay that was shown during the PlayStation event. I believe the only PlayStation 5 game we saw with a HUD was Ratchet and Clank, whereas the kind of funny team kept saying HUDs were important for gameplay in the Xbox event. And Ron, do you think we hold Xbox to a higher standard when it comes to these things? Yes and no. I I think he's kind of RP. Uh, I think Michael S. is kind of right that we did hold that event up to a higher standard because it was the first event. It was the first one that we're going to see next gen gameplay reveal, and a lot of what we, a lot of our disappointment with that, was based on disappointment for it not blowing us away. With like we expected next gen, the first next gen thing you see to be the thing that really like blows it out of the water. So yes, to that extent, I do believe it was a little unfair to Microsoft of how people react to that event. That said, it was also a bad event. It was also like they focused primarily on titles that didn't really impress visually that didn't uh really impress on an even a gameplay level like i don't agree with michael s's assertion that we didn't see that much gameplay in the ps5 reveal we did it's just it was hudless because that's the way they want it to look and maybe huds aren't finalized yet it may be just a marketing reason but usually you can tell when's the gameplay when it's not I think Microsoft erred by trying to separate out the third party and the uh, first party stuff. Because if you did do that same event, but you just sandwiched that between like Halo and whatever, Fable, then I think people would be more interested in it. I think it would have been a more marketable thing to throw out there. I don't think Microsoft is held to a higher standard because like it's Microsoft and we're holding Sony to a lower one. I think Microsoft is held to a higher standard because Microsoft has more to prove. They have, they, they've been kind of catching up from behind in a lot of things, like first-party software. So when they show, like, hey, we're th- if, if their entire marketing pitch is we're the third-party system, third-party games will run best here, and you don't show a lot of interesting third-party games, then your entire pitch falls flat. So they have to come at it next time with when their first-party pitch of, okay, yeah, we're not just a third-party system. Also, we have exclusives that will be interesting to you. And that, I think, is going to be a bigger test for them. And if they do knock that one out of the park, which who knows, they might, then I think people will forget about the fact that the first one didn't look that great. Yeah, and I'm, I'm with you there. I, when, I, when I think about the Xbox event, the thing that went wrong for me is I think they mismanaged expectations on what we, um, like the, the caliber of announcements we could expect from it. Like when you, when you come out and say, hey, this is the first showcase of next generation gameplay and you're going to get gameplay after gameplay right and they and they show us what they showed us like technically they weren't wrong right like technically like we did get gameplay of next gen games but none of that none of the announcements really spoke to us on a like next gen gameplay level yeah nor did they speak to us on a these are exciting games level like and that's not necessarily even taken away from from the games they showed because that the games like bright memory infinite i'm excited for like that game looks cool to me it's not. It doesn't. It doesn't get me as excited as Deathloop, though. Like, yes. and that's not to ta- that's not to like add to Deathloop, and that's not to take away from Bright Memory Infinite. It's just like different. There's different expectations there as far as the the amount of weight that a game like Deathloop, that is a first, that is a game coming from Arcane Studios, which we have a history with, coming out of Bethesda, all these things has awesome gameplay, uh, or had an awesome gameplay reveal, like. Th- the 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 weight that we have on both of those announcements, I think, just holds differently, right? And I'm looking at a list right now of the different games that were that were that were at that inside Xbox event, and it's 
I, I'm looking at game. I'm looking at Call of the Sea, and I I couldn't tell you what that game looks like, right? Right? Like Call of the Sea yeah. was which, none which of these titles are up. coming up to my like. I cannot visualize what you're talking about for these games. Yeah, like they had Chorus, which I remember. I remember there being a game called Chorus, and I remember watching, and I think that was the one that actually had like the gothic uh, kind of stuff going on with it. But like, I couldn't really tell you much about Chorus other than than we saw a trailer for it, right? Like Dirt Five is cool um uh scarlet nexus you know it's cool like scorn it's cool like these these are these are these are games that they're, they're worth seeing because you know people are working on these games and and uh for the most part like these games seem interesting but when you compare them to games like ratchet and clank or hitman 3 or spider and miles morales or um solar ash or or horizon right like I feel like the games in the PlayStation 5 reveal were just set up way more to succeed. One, because they they Sony didn't necessarily limit themselves in terms of games. They didn't mm. come out and go solely third party, and they didn't come out and, and go solely first party, right? It was more of an all-encompassing event, uh, way more so than the Xbox event. Uh, and so when we go when we go into the PlayStation 5 reveal and we see first party games, we see a bunch of exclusives, we see some third party games, and we see uh, the two boxes that they have, right? Like that's big. Like that that's all bigger news than what was shown to us at the Microsoft event. Granted, the Microsoft event wasn't necessarily built as what the PlayStation event was, but I think there was the mismanaging of expectations on the side of Microsoft. Uh, and we're gonna see, right? We're gonna see in July uh, for what the, their first party showing is. And we're gonna see soon, like in terms of what their big showcase is for the box. You know, and when they show off Lockhart and and what all that stuff looks like, I think we're gonna get there with Xbox. But in terms of how they are, both companies are pacing out their reveals and pacing out how uh, p- pacing out how they are uh, handing out information to the audience, right? Like PlayStation Five or the PlayStation Five event did it in just a bigger way that hit harder because they were able to kind of back back up the the expectations with their actual announcements and their actual showing in a way that the Microsoft conference or microsoft uh inside xbox show it didn't and so to the to your to to the original question of do we have higher standards for xbox honestly like yeah i i I think i agree with imran that yeah we do because they have more to prove um and i think to be fair to, to to xbox they've been proving that over the last few years with services with acquisitions of studios with a bunch of moves they've been making over the last few years um, but right now is kind of the critical time for them where they really, really, really need to stick the landing because they're ramping up to the new box. And that's kind of where things went wrong for them last time. And to so that, to that end, if they had said mm-hmm. like from the beginning, for the beginning of the inside Xbox, every game you see today will be on game pass day one. Like that would have been huge. That would have been like, okay, yeah, yes. like I'm not that impressed by like this weird game, this weird horror game, but you know, I play at launch or, oh yeah, like they didn't show much Assassin's Creed but I'm going to get it with my subscription anyway, so who really cares? I'll play it in a couple of months. But the fact that they hung their hat on Assassin's Creed and said, we're going to show gameplay of this game at this event, yeah. and then there was like no gameplay, that's what I think... It's really hard to unring a bell, and Microsoft yeah. is learning that lesson, and I think by the next event, maybe we'll forget about all about this like kind of misstep, but... Yeah, if you just compare the first two events against each other, it's not a contest, honestly. Yeah, and and it's kind of unfair because like you can kind of see that they had two they had two different goals with yes. both those events. But I don't but, think it's unfair. I think that's their fault. I think they yeah. they made they made an event that was a reveal of their console that was not impressive. Yeah, and I and I one hundred percent agree with that. Um, yeah. What do you think we're going to get from this first party reveal event that they do in, in July? Do you think we're going to get to see what everybody's working on? Or do you think it do you, do you think it might underwhelm us? Like that's my fear is that we like they they advertise it as a first party exclusive exclusive kind of event and mm-hmm. there's not enough there because they can't the, you can't imagine they're going to show us literally everything they have that they have that they're working on. I think if they have more studios that they've bought, this would be a great time to announce that. I think it's very likely that we'll see. Well, we already know Ninja Theory is working on Hellblade, uh, so the other yeah. studios they've got will probably see the Initiative game, and hopefully that like impresses. But I think the wisest thing for Microsoft to do is to go. We're not going to make the same mistakes we made last time. 
we're not gonna like just rely on a couple of games with the titles of which you already know. So why don't I think I've been thinking about this a lot lately. I think Microsoft might learn a good lesson from Marvel in that the way Marvel announces movies, I think that wor- would work well for the way Microsoft should announce games. I think they should like we're committing to a very big first party slate. So here's a list of the games that we're working on. Like throw the the secrecy of the video game industry in the trash and say, here's the timeline that we're planning for perfect dark for 2022. We're planning for Fable for 2023. Like that kind of thing. It may piss some people off and be like, oh God, these games are so far away. But I think it does a good job of showing how committed they are to this new system and showing what they believe their capability of make, like creating a first party portfolio actually is. Yeah. I, I I hope so, man, because I think that would be awesome. I think that would be the, 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 the key for them to really come out and really impress people is to have that kind of timeline. I don't know if they'd be willing to, because of how the, how like murky the games industry can be in terms of wanting to announce games or wanting to, or can be murky in terms of wanting to, to keep that information to the chest because you don't know which direction a um, game development might take if you announce something that is like three or four years away. But I think on the Microsoft side, like I think it, that could do them such a good service if they were like, hey, here's here's Xbox for the next three to four years. Like here's everything we have working on. Here are all, all our different, different studios. Here's what you can expect from us. I think that would, I think that clarity could do a lot for them if it looks good right like yeah. if, if if they're confident in what the next three or four years looks like for them because like they have commitment problems like xbox one they announced a fable game at the reveal and that game never came out they announced Scalebound, they canceled it they announced phantom dust they canceled it they announced other things and just yeah those games God, didn't scale bound. <laughs> like it's it this would do a good job of saying hey we're in this for the long haul don't worry about it we know why why currently you like Sony's output better than ours, but we're we want to make a compelling case for why you should stick to Microsoft. And if they can do that, then great. But it it'll take a bold move, and whether or not July will be that time for that bold move is a completely different question, honestly. Now it's time to squat up. Penultimate conquest writes in and says, Hey KFGD crew. I'm looking for some best friends to play Warzone with. I'm usually online after 6 p.m. Eastern time, so if you're cool with me streaming, feel free to add me. You can add Penultimate Conquest on Activision with the username Sleeper Tech Dub. That's all one word: Sleeper Tech Dub. T E C H. Exactly. T E C H. So yeah. spell how it sounds: Sleeper Tech Dub. Now it's time for kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong, where you write in, let us know what we got wrong as we got it wrong. Uh, Nail Ball just says, well, people are, people are writing, we were writing and talking about the PAX West stuff that was breaking as we started the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dan H says, Jason Schreier reported that Rocksteady and WME Montreal's games were going to be shown together at E3. So it's not impossible they show them both now, which yeah. would be interesting. Be very interesting. Uh, Nail Ball just says, the Avengers game event is called the Avengers War Table Stream. And that's happening on June 24th. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ray says they play the Frozen World music in the trailer, hmm. which is pretty cool. So, so yeah, maybe they maybe will. Not, maybe not all hope is lost. Like, this is Halloween is my, like, that's the defining line. If, that, if that's not in there, then I don't care. But if it is in there, then cool. I'm into it. I want that Snowman song, man. Would you like to build a snowman? That was, my, that was always my jam from Frozen. I always appreciated that one. I've never heard anyone say that's their favorite song from Frozen. Like I've heard some disagree. It's because every, but... everybody goes to Let It Go, and I'm like, I, guys, I get it. Let It Go is a fantastic song, <laughs> but like, do you want to build a snowman? Oh man, that thing's a slapper. As soon as I heard that song, I was like, this is gonna be a classic. I can see a future for this movie. This movie's gonna gonna <laughs> gonna go hard in, in the in the box office. Have you seen Frozen Two? Out of curiosity, no, I've not. I've been I've been wanting to watch it, but I've been holding it so I can watch it with friends. Okay, I. It's a very anticlimactic movie. <laughs> oh, oh no! But, Don't tell me uh, that. I'm curious what your thoughts are when you actually do end up watching it. Uh, Nintendo uh, did retweet the Pokemon announcement, for the record. Oh well, there you go. So yeah, there and people go. are saying it's mo- the Japanese tweet mentioned it's more about the expansion pass. So 
I guess that's what, mostly what we're looking for. I guess they got to detail the next one as well, so people buy the pass. That makes sense. Yeah, that that would make sense. Uh, Matt the Wob says, "Not really. You're wrong. Just additional information." But Melody of Memories is going to have online and will have over 140 tracks, which is really yeah, exciting. 140 is a decent one, decent a decent track number for a rhythm game. And then. Uh, last one from Nanobiologist. Uh, the game Detective Pikachu got a sequel announced last year during the same type of Pokemon event, not the movie. And that's kind of what I was thinking, but I wasn't like positive. But yeah, I think like the Detective Pikachu game definitely did get a sequel. Or it yeah. definitely get did get announced a sequel. A couple people um, are saying that like the movie is getting a, a sequel is in the works, but it's not been like officially officially announced. announced. Yeah. Well, that's it for kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Tomorrow's hosts are Greg and Gary Witta for Witta Wednesday. And of course, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily each and every weekday at 10 a.m. live right here on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. We have a Patreon post show for those that are subbed at the silver level of patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games. So stick around for that. Otherwise, until next time, game daily. <laughs>